Okay, so um, today we want to have a look at another rule called the cosine rule. Um, also for use in non-right angled triangles, again, if you've got a right angled triangle, use Sokotoa. It's quicker and it's easier. Okay, so let's have a think about the following triangle. So we've got two side lengths and an angle. We're trying to find another angle. Now, if we were to use our sine rule here, the problem is, is this is helpful to telling me I want to use the sine rule. Okay, because I know obviously that sine of, sorry, I know obviously that um, sine of 25 degrees over 3 is going to be equal to sine of theta over, but the problem is, is I don't know what this side length is. So I've now got two unknown things in the equation, and so I can't solve it. Okay, I know this 8 centimetre length, but I don't know the angle opposite that and haven't got enough information to find that so I can't find um, I can't find that angle well I could I, you could find that angle so you could do, do this problem using the sine rule in a number of steps okay so you could do sine of alpha over 8 equals um, sine 25 over 3 find alpha then subtract from 180 to find theta and then um, find the unknown and find theta that way okay but the point is that we don't have a direct way because we've got the angle that we're trying to find we don't know the side length opposite that and we don't have a quick way to find that side length then um, there's a better option to use the cosine rule as the first step rather than need to do find another angle and then find the angle that we need okay so we want to introduce the cosine rule which would enable us to find that unknown angle with that information that we've got in the question there, okay? Um, all right, so let's have a think about this. Um, again, I'm going to generate the formula, and this all looks a bit complicated and messy. I'm not asking you to do this algebra. I'm asking you to follow me as I explain what's happening to you, to it here, happening here, so that you can then have an understanding that this cosine rule doesn't just appear out of nowhere, okay? It's based in a whole lot of factor maths we actually already understand, and then once we've got a rule, we can go on and use it. Um, okay, so we have, um, again, I'm going to take that same situation. We're going to have our triangle ABC, so side lengths are labelled with their lowercase, opposite side lengths labelled with their lowercase letter. We're going to drop that perpendicular from B down to um, the horizontal side length so down to um, the point P so it meets that horizontal side length at a right angle and we only call that H because that's the height of the triangle. The point of doing that is that we've now divided our triangle into two right angled triangles. So to help me just um, to be able to construct some expressions I'm going to call this length here X which is going to therefore make this length here B minus X. Okay so we've introduced a couple of letters that we don't really want here x and h they're just to help us get to the equation there won't be any x's or h's in the equation at the end we want an equation that only connects uppercase a b and c so those three angles with lowercase a b and c those three side lengths okay so in triangle apb okay so apb is the smaller of the two right angled triangles that we've constructed here so in that triangle we can see that using Pythagoras tells us that c squared equals h squared plus b minus x squared. Now if we expand out our brackets, being careful to use our perfect square expansion, remembering that b minus x all squared is not b squared minus x squared, it's b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. Okay, so we've done that, we're just going to leave that, we'll come back to that. Now if we think about the triangle CPB, okay, so this time, oh sorry, this time, the bigger of the two right angled triangles that we've created. Again, if we use Pythagoras' theorem in that triangle, we can see that a squared is equal to h squared plus x squared. And if I rearrange that to make h squared the subject, that's telling me that h squared is a squared minus x squared. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is take this, this is equal to h squared, so let's replace the h squared in this equation with a squared minus x squared. And remember that's because h, the height of the triangle, is not something we're going to know in these problems. We're only going to know the angles and the side lengths. So whilst we want to use h to generate the formula, we then want to get rid of it out of our formula. So we've, we've got rid of h from the formula. So we've now got this. Okay, c squared is a squared minus h squared plus b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. 
Um, and then we can collect some like terms happening here. So um, the minus x squared and the plus x squared cancel out. So we've now got c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2bx. Okay, so we're nearly there, but we don't like this x because we won't know what x is. We're only going to know a, b and c, lowercase a, b and c and uppercase a, b and c. All right, so again, let's look at that same right angle triangle, the larger of the two right angle triangles, c, p, b, and use some trigonometry. Okay, so some Sokotoa trigonometry. So cos of c is x over a in that right angle triangle which means x is equal to a times cos of c. And so now we can take that, it's equal to x, and we can stick it in place of here where we had an x. And we get this equation here. And so just, um, we don't really need those brackets. So what we have here is that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times cos of c. And again, I could re rename this triangle. So I change a to b and and uh, b to a and, um, oh, sorry, b to c and uh, c to a, and the, the letters would come out in a slightly different order. Um, so I've written three different equations down the bottom here, um, three different formulas here, but I wanna be clear again about the fact that they are the same formula. The key thing in the formula is that lowercase c over here, this side length has to pair with this angle here, okay? They have to be a pair, and by that I mean an uh, opposite side, an angle and its opposite side length. Okay. Other than that, a squared plus b squared, that would be the same if we wrote b squared plus a squared. So it doesn't matter what order you put the other two side lengths in. Equally, minus 2 times a times b would be the same as minus 2 times b times a. So it doesn't matter what order you choose, what's a and what's b. The key thing to getting the formula right is the side length you use on the left hand side must be the side length opposite the angle in the cosine. Okay, Again, this side length B opposite this um, angle B. Okay, That's the key thing. Everything else in your formula will fall into place around that, making sure that you've got that pair right. Okay, So that sometimes means that you have to set up your equation in a less than ideal way, but that's how it has to happen. The only thing that has to be right, well, our other things have to be right, but the thing that will help you get everything right is to make sure that if you use side length b over here, you need angle b in the cosine. Therefore, if you don't know angle b, you can't use you can, you have to change and restructure it and use a different angle. All right, I think we just need to look at some examples here. So find the value of x um, correct to two decimal places. All right. So again, the fact that if we think about using sine rule, I don't know the angle opposite the side length I'm trying to find, and so. Uh, my sine rule is going to be problematic because I'll have x over sine of question mark. Um, and so there's two unknowns in the equation. So cosine rule is the way to go here. So we're finding the value of x. Now I want to be really clear about the fact that just because you want to find x doesn't mean you can automatically write x equals on the left hand side of your equation. Because remember the thing that the side length on the left hand side has to pair with the angle. We've only got one angle here it's 78 degrees. So our equation has to have cos of 78 degrees in it. So that means the left hand side of the equation must use 15. Okay. And then the other two side lengths, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Okay. So the fact that 15 and 78 are opposite things, that's the key information. Everything else needs to go from there. All right, so then we've got a side length squared plus a side length squared. So we're using our other two side lengths. So x squared plus 12 squared, or you could write 12 squared plus x squared. That's the same thing. Then it is minus 2 times our other two side lengths multiplied together. So 2 times x times 12 times cos of 78. Again, if you wrote 12 squared plus x squared minus 2 times 12 times x, same thing. doesn't make any difference. Okay, so get your 15 and your 78 in the right place and then it's the other two side lengths squared and added together minus two times the other two side lengths multiplied together. Okay, again, you get you use this formula, you'll get used to it. All right, so once again, we could muck around and do some rearranging by hand ourselves, but actually we're not going to be able to get x on our own, on its own by ourselves very easily here because there's two x's in this equation. And again, at some point, we're going to need our CAS to work out what cos of 78 is. So we will have our CAS. So why not just solve for x to start with? Okay. So 
let's solve our equation, we could work out what 15 squared is and what 12 squared is and all those things, but we don't need to. Let's just write down the equation and then get our cars to solve it. All right, so solve 15 squared equals x squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times x times 12 times cos of 78. And outside of the cos function, we want to solve this equation for x. Now, same thing's going to apply here that we might need to add a restriction if it's the thing inside the cosine that's unknown. But it's not. The, we know the 78 inside the cos, so it's that's fine. It's just lengths that we don't know. So if it's the angle we don't know, we'll need a restriction. If it's lengths we don't know, we don't need any restriction at all. So solving this equation for x, control enter to get a decimal. Now, we get two solutions here, but we're dealing with a triangle. Which, and we're looking for a side length, so clearly we can't have a negative side length, and so therefore we can ignore the negative one. Um, so therefore x is, two decimal places, approximately equal to 11.83, and our units here are centimetres. So again, thinking a bit about, um, a bit about uh, is, does my answer make sense? Okay, obviously we don't know the other angles in this triangle, uh, it looks like this is a smaller angle, smallest angle, so this should be smallest side length. Um, we wouldn't necessarily assume that, but it does seem to make sense um, given the information that we've got. Okay, example two. Triangle ABC, angle A is 52, side length A is 10, side length B is 7, find side length C. Okay, let's see what we've got here. So A is 52, side length opposite is 10, Uh, B is 7, let's make that that one, and we want to find side length C. Okay, so again, what drives the setup of your cosine rule is the fact that you know about this side length and its opposite angle. So we have to have 10 squared on the left hand side, and we have to have cos of 52 degrees at the end on the right hand side. Okay, everything else then we need to work around that. So it's our other two side lengths squared and added together. So c squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times c times 7 times that cosine. Again, let's get our cas to solve. Solving, we've got 10 squared. Okay, yes, you can write 100, but it doesn't matter. Equals c squared plus 7 squared. Yes, you can write 49 if you want. Minus 2 times c times 7 times, and yes, you can write 14c. Um, times cos of 52, comma x, it's uh, comma c, sorry, we're solving for c. It's a c's a length, so there's no problems, we don't need a restriction. Control enter for our final answer. Again, c's a length has to be positive, and so therefore we know that c, correct to two decimal places, is 12.65 centimetres. Okay, example three, find theta, correct to one decimal place. All right, so we want to find this angle, which means we need to we want to have theta in the equation. There's only one angle in the cosine rule. It's going to have to go in the cosine, which means it needs to be the 7 centimetres on the left-hand side. So we know that we need cos of theta here, which means that we have to have equals 7 squared over here. Okay, Everything else, it doesn't matter what order. So now we're going to do... 3 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 3 times 8. Okay, Or you could do 8 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 8 times 3. It's the same thing. Uh, okay, um, solving for theta. Now this time, let's solve. 7 squared equals 3 squared plus 8 squared. Now again, you can do some tidying up if you want. You know, 49 equals uh, 9 plus 64 is 73 minus, you know, if you want. Or you can just substitute the information into the equation, type the equation straight into your CAS as it is. Cos of, now theta is hard to get, I'll just use x. Solving for x. Now, if I just press enter here or control enter here, I'm going to get this infinitely many solutions thing because it's the angle I'm trying to solve for. So we need to restrict the angle. So let's copy that. We need given that outside of the solve function. So given that, now we've got no other angles here, so we only know that theta has to be somewhere between 0 and 180. So given that 0 is less than, uh, now it's called x in my equation, which has to be less than 180. Control enter, and now we find 
that theta is equal to 60 degrees. Okay, so again, using CAS to solve the equations involving trig ratios. So um, solving for a length, no problem. Solving for an angle, you're going to need the given that symbol after your solve function. All right, let's just do a couple more examples. If you want to pause the video now and have a go at these three examples before watching me do it, and then come back and watch and see if you managed to get them right, uh, by all means, go ahead. Okay, so find the length AB correct to do this all places. Okay, let's just call this x for the purpose of our equation, setting up our equation. Now, 31 degrees is the angle we know, which means we're going to need to use 8 centimetres on the right hand, on the left-hand side of the equation. So we're going to have 8 squared equals, and at the other end, we're going to have cos of 31. Okay, so then um, the other side lengths, oh, my apologies, sorry, uh, x and 15. Okay, so 8 squared equals x, sorry, x squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times x times 15 and times cos of 31. Let's get our cas to solve that. Then you 3, 1, 8 squared equals x squared minus 15 squared, sorry, plus 15 squared minus 2 times x times 15 times cos of 31. Solve for x. x is a length. We don't need a restriction. Control enter for a decimal answer. Ah, now x is approximately uh, two decimal places, 10.78 uh, centimeters or 14.93 centimetres. So previously we were able to reject one of the solutions because we got a negative length, but neither of these are negative. And again, that's because we've got a triangle that's ambiguous here. So again, if you think about treating this length here as a pendulum, swinging it around, it would also be possible to get another um, triangle with the same information. So 10.78 would be um, this length here or you could have another triangle with 14.93 okay so two possible and correct answers here to this particular question okay find the value of alpha correct to one decimal place all right so uh, we're going to need to use alpha as the angle in the cosine which means we need to use the nine centimeters on the left hand side so nine squared is equal to 6 squared plus 11 squared, or you can write 11 squared plus 6 squared, doesn't matter, minus 2 times 6 times 11 times cos of alpha. Okay, so again, the alpha and the 9 are what's important. Everything else will fall into place around that. Okay, so we need to solve that equation. Menu 3, 1. We're solving 9 squared equals 6 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 6 times 11 times cos of, I'll just call it x in my case, we're solving for x. Now because we're solving for the angle, we need a restriction. So outside of the solve function, given that, and again we've got no other angles so we can only limit it, we know it has to be somewhere between 0 and 180. x is to be bigger than 0 and smaller than 180. Oh, 180. Control enter for a decimal answer. And we find that x, now be careful because it's not called x on the paper, so alpha, oh, I think I might have done that incorrectly for the back, did I? Oh no, I called it theta here. Um, so alpha is approximately one decimal place, uh, 50, oh, sorry about that, 54.8 degrees to one decimal place. Okay, last example here, let's start to combine together some of the application problems we've looked at with now non-right angle triangles. So two hikers walk from the same point, one eight kilometers in the direction of 140 degrees true, and the other 10 kilometers in the direction of 215 degrees true. Okay, so 140 is gonna be somewhere between east and south, and 215 is gonna be somewhere between south and west. So let's put the starting point sort of, you know, at the top. I'm going to call that S for the start. Okay. All right. So 140 degrees true is going to be, um, sorry, I'm just trying to get that sort of vague compass bearing. So heading out somewhere down this way. Um, 
and that's 8 kilometers and then 215 uh, 180 plus 35 so sort of um, I'm sorry <laughs> All right, let's try again okay so sort of down this way perhaps and that's 10 kilometers not centimeters kilometers okay so what we've done there is we've said okay we've got north we are traveling this way is 140 degrees that's that bearing okay um, which if we want to think about is means that this angle in here is going to be 40 and then the other bearing is 215 okay which means that's 180 plus 35 so that makes that 35 degrees in there okay so we've now got an angle in the triangle how far apart are they at the end of their walk okay so we've got our two hikers we want to know they've walked in these directions these distances we want to know once they finish how far apart are they so that's what we're trying to find okay so we're going to make use of that angle in the triangle we know that it's 35 plus 40 degrees so that's 75 degrees in there okay and so again we're going to use our cosine rule which means that we're going to need if we want to find x we're going to need to use cos of 75 in our equation okay so we're going to have x squared equals and we're going to have cos of 75 degrees on the other side okay so again here's our pair of things that are important and then everything else can fall into place around it so 10 squared plus 8 squared or 8 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8 times cos of 75 okay we want to solve for x now this one's a sort of interesting one we haven't had this come up in a previous example but in this case actually we've pretty much already got x on its own because x isn't muddled up in over here like we've seen in all our other examples x is over here almost on its own except that it's being squared so you could solve for x or you could do the one thing that you need to do to solve it i.e. get x on its own yourself which would be the square root and then you could just type that in so you don't need to do any solving so you could straight away put in square root of 10 squared plus 8 squared uh, minus 2 times 10 times 8 times cos of 75 control enter and we find that x is approximately equal to 11.07 kilometers alternatively if you'd solve the equation at the beginning no problem with that solving x squared equals 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8 times cos of 75 comma x control enter you find you get two solutions but one's negative you can't have a negative length and so you just use the 11.07 kilometers okay so up to you in that simple little simple rearrangement where all you need to do is square root both sides whether you do that yourself and then just enter in the expression rather than an equation to be solved or whether you solve from the beginning either way okay so exercise 4g making use of the cosine rule